Alrighty, in today's video, we're going to be exploring the Let's formula that recently came out with Notion Formulas 2.0. And as you can see on the screen, the Let's function allows you to assign values to multiple variables and evaluates the expression using those variables. And so basically what that means is you can create a formula to assign a variable and all you have to do is reference that variable and so you don't have to copy and paste the same thing over and over and over again like we used to in Notion Formulas 1.0. As you can imagine, that's a pretty nice time saver and it makes it look cleaner. And with the new formatting feature as well, we can make this pop out a little more and sort of define things in an easier way. There is a steep learning curve with Notion Formulas 2.0. And so the point of my videos are to make it feel easier to understand. And that's the goal of this three minute formula series, right? So we're on episode three, we're going to be creating custom date statuses using the let's formula. And so let's get started. I have a date property. This property can be in any database. We'll start by adding let's and I saw someone else do this on YouTube. Click enter twice backspace and close it. With a let's function, you must define variables first before you're able to manipulate them. In our case, we'll just call this date. And within the let's formula, we need to separate everything by commas because that's going to be the way that this formula says, oh, okay, so you've defined this. And so now we're going to go do this. In our case, we want to sort of use this date property to create a custom output. And so we're going to do just that. And we're going to do that by measuring the date between, which is just another formula that, that allows you to compare two dates and then tell you within an incremented time stamp, like in days, weeks, months, hours, to get started. We're going to reference date comma to separate the other date. And we're going to be referencing now again. Went over this in previous videos. It just creates a timestamp for the immediate presence. We have to increment it by days. Well, this can be weeks or months, whatever you want. But in our case, we want to just measure days. We actually just spell it out like that. And we have to close it with this date between. Now there's no error code. When we just spit out date, you might get this error. This basically just means that I need to add a comma at the end. Like I just mentioned in the video, those commas are going to be the way that you separate and define things. And notice what I did here, right? So I defined the variable date and then I just outputted it. So now I can do date plus one. And so you can start manipulating based on all that stuff. Currently it's outputting minus four and that's because the date we have is September 25th. Today is the 29th and so that is correct. What's neat now with this let's formula is now when we want to use that extra layer of the ifs function to create those targeted specified outputs. How do we want to signify output when it's overdue or late or whatever verbiage that you want to use and however you want to define them. If it's a one week behind us, if it's one week ahead of us, right? Does two days late mean it's overdue? This is a great opportunity to think about defining how you want to create these interactions and how that can sort of connect into your day to day life so that there's a little more meaning to what you're doing here. Now that we've defined date, we can create various outputs using the manipulation of the variable date. So let's say if date is less than zero, which basically says if it's before today, let's call it past. And again, with the ifs, we just need to create the criteria, the output, add that comma. And so now we create a new line to signify the other options, right? So if date is equal to zero, maybe we can call it current. Add that comma, enter. Now we can add that third outcome. So if date is greater than zero, future. So now we can just close it and you can kind of see what happens here. Because this is in the past, now if we do 30th, oh, it's current. In this case, that's probably not a great way to use the number zero. But if we do one, future. Maybe we remove current. It's a little funky there. The 30th, it says it's current. If I do 29th, it says current. If I do 28, it's past, right? So I guess in this sense, this formula gives you that one day buffer. Current in this case represents both today and tomorrow. Do what you will with that information. I didn't know this is what was going to be outputted, but this is an example of how to use that let's function. The other layers I wanted to sort of add into this was the use of emojis or to sort of emphasize these outputs a little more. I keep saying output output with notions formula 2.0, you can have the ability to style this text as well as add links. And so I just want to illustrate a little bit of that. And it's really simple. We're going to use that dot notation. And we just add that dot notation after the quotation mark. So we just do dot style. And then we're going to 
open the parentheses up. And then what we can do is actually just select, type in a, the name of a color, close it, and now the output should be in yellow. Boom. That yellow is kind of like poop yellow. Obviously, I think um, there's a lot of opportunity to play around with that, but just wanted to show you a little bit of that. Another cool feature in Notion is when you click on colon and type in a keyword that comes to mind when you think of an emoji. So if I type in hand, right, you can see what pops up. What you can do here is you knew what sort of emoji you wanted to insert within this output. I'll do colon, warning, and maybe I'll grab a few. Copy those, go in back into your formula, and then you can just paste them in there. And so now you've added that extra sort of visual effect within your outcomes and it looks much better, right? And it's very simple to add those colored effects. I think that's how you do bold. Yep. So if you do style and then quotation B, and I think maybe that works the same with italics. There you go. I hope this was helpful. I just went over the let's function, the style function, and then sort of layering the ifs outcome within that variable lens. Right? Notice that I define the variable date and then use that in all three of my ifs outcomes. So I didn't have to copy paste that every time. It's short enough where I could have, but again, this is to illustrate value of the let's because we can actually define so much more. We can call it whatever we want and then have a sort of conditional outputting strategy that manipulates all the variables you want. Although this wasn't three minutes at all, there are some useful tidbits that you can use to start thinking about how you can use the let's function to do more than just use dates. This is one example. This is episode three. There's gonna be more to come. I already have other stuff planned. If you got something out of this, please give it a like, comment, whatever. I'm also made a YouTube post about a giveaway. So if you wanna go check that out and give me feedback on what you'd like to win from the subscribers only giveaway, let me know. I really enjoy making these videos. But I'm still trying to figure out where I want to take this and how I want to engage with my subscribers because I think that's kind of what's missing in the current direction that I'm headed. Yeah, thanks for watching. Seems like every time these videos get a little longer, but that's okay, right? We're all learning. I'm still learning. And um, especially when it comes to Notion, you just got to keep at it, right? It's not something you're going to learn overnight. And it's one of those things that you, where consistency pays off right? And persistence also pays off. And if I'm being quite honest, it's kind of like a muscle that you got to work and train, right? If I stop using it for a few months, I feel like I kind of get behind, right? That's just my point of view. But yeah, ramble off. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.